this morning I see this report on, of course, Russia Today, the uh, Soviet Stalinist propaganda channel financed by the Kremlin, uh, beamed out all over the world just for the sole purpose of sticking it to the U.S. and creating um, what they call... demoralization in the United States public. There was a former KGB agent who would have been all over this Russia Today broadcast. If you go in YouTube and you type in a former Russia KGB agent um, talks about uh, uh, you know Soviet propaganda, you might be able to find this guy. I forgot his name offhand, but anyway. This Russia Today uh, broadcast I saw this morning has this dude, this black dude, and all he's talking about is how that Obama isn't a real black president. Obama wasn't the first black president because Obama wasn't black. Obama didn't care about black issues. And so he wasn't the real black president. Let's take a listen to this rambling nonsense. What has the first black president done for the black community in America? Nothing, according to some. Just recently, Obama's been catering to a number of minority communities in the U.S. First, it was the LGBT community. At a certain point, I've just concluded that, um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Then it was the immigrant community. This is a temporary stopgap measure that lets us focus our resources wisely while giving a degree of relief and hope to talented, driven, patriotic young people. It is the, it is the right thing to do. So what about African Americans? Obama has, hasn't made moves to deal with African American inequalities in this country. In an op-ed titled, Obama's not the first black president, he's the first president who is black. Wilmer Leon describes Obama as a, quote, functionary of a government in the service of wealth and empire. To join me now to speak more about his article is Dr. Wilmer Leon himself. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. So what do you mean by Obama is not the first black president? Well, what I mean by that is, as I say in the article, that a black president would have come to the Oval Office with a black agenda. He would be using his bully pulpit to articulate and advocate for positions and issues that are specifically relevant to the African American community. For example, uh, disproportionate uh, levels of incarceration in this country, disproportionate levels of poverty in terms of the black community in this country, uh, health care issues that are uh, specifically targeted to the African American community. Um, as the first president who is black, uh, President Obama is focused more on the national agenda uh, as the President of the United States, as a functionary of the United States government, as opposed to an individual who came to the Oval Office with an agenda that was uh, uh, created or, or designed to specifically target issues in the African American community. And I, and I want to be very clear and say that, as I say in the article, that this has everything to do with policy. It has everything to do with an agenda and has absolutely nothing to do with the person or personalities. And you also mentioned in your article the NDAA, um, extrajudicial extra judicial assassination, yes. and also Guantanamo Bay. Yes. How is that part of the black agenda? Well, it's not so much a part of the black agenda as it is, I, I say in the piece, that uh, an African-American president would not have signed the 2012 Defense Authorization Act that in part allows for indefinite detention of American citizens. That an African-American president would not have backed the assassination of Muammar Gaddafi. An, American uh, an African-American or black president um, would not have uh, uh, had a attorney general come out and say that the United States government can assassinate Americans 
anywhere in the world. And the reason is because a black president would have come into the office with a historical understanding, for example, of the FBI counterintelligence program. A black president would understand how the United States government infiltrated uh, civil rights organizations in the 60s and undermined the efforts of, of the civil rights organizations. He would understand how the government has been used over time to undermine efforts for civil rights and civil liberties by African American uh, organizations. So a, having that historic understanding, he would be less inclined to, to support uh, legislation or, or support ideas that would enable the government to engage in those types of behaviors today. Do you think that he doesn't have a historical understanding of what has happened in the civil rights era and also... Well, I, I'm sure that, that President Obama, particularly being a constitutional scholar, is very much aware of, of that history. But again, because he does not bring that agenda into the Oval Office, that that's not what is controlling his thought process, that is not what is controlling his vision. He is more concerned with, as he says, he's the president of everybody. And also I want to be very clear to say, I'm not saying that he should bring this to, uh, to the Oval Office, I'm making the observation that he has not. And that it's very important at the end of the day, what I believe the African American community needs to understand. That is if we as a community, if we as an interest group are looking to have our issues addressed, then we have to get, we have to make it happen. We have to do as Roosevelt said to uh, A. Philip Randolph in 1936. He said, yes, Mr. Randolph, I, I agree with you. Go out and make me do it. I think there are too many of us in the African American community that are sitting idly by waiting for President Obama to do what we believe needs to be done instead of being in the streets as the gay and lesbian community has been, being in the streets as the uh, Hispanic community has been. We need to be in the streets championing our issues the same way that other organizations such as APAC. There's no way in the world that APAC is going to sit idly by and allow a, um, an American president not to focus foreign policy on, on Israel in, in the manner in which they want it addressed. And so if, if we have concerns in our community, then we need, we need to move away from the politics of personality and start understanding the politics of policy. Because it's one thing to have an African-American individual sitting in the White House. That's, that's wonderful. That symbolism is incredibly powerful and incredibly valuable. But at the end of the day, politics is not about symbolism. Politics is about policy. Wilmer, are you surprised though? I mean, Obama didn't really grow up in any relation to the black culture. He didn't grow up in the ghetto. He's always been a very privileged man uh, with a rich family. Uh, are you surprised at him kind of evading, really honing in on the focus of the African community? Well, the, first of all, the African American community is much more diverse than, than urban, and President Obama did not grow up uh, wealthy. He, I mean, his, his, he was born to a single mother. Uh, uh, he, he grew up, his mother worked a number of jobs. He, he uh, grew up with his grandparents. Uh, true, he did not grow up in uh, the traditional, we'll say, uh, African American community. But the point, again, is not individually focused, it's policy focused. So whether uh, President Obama grew up in Harlem or whether President Obama grew up in Denver, Colorado, it's still incumbent upon those in the African-American community to ensure that our interests are being articulated and that our interests are being acted upon, no matter who is in the White House. And I think that, that to me, is, is the point that your audience needs to take away from this conversation, is that the fact that there is an African-American in the White House is a wonderful thing. But for us, for too many of us, to sit by and expect that because he is African American, he is then going to address the issues that we need addressed is a fallacy. We have to be out in the streets. We have the civil rights movement was a movement and it was part of a process and too much of that process has been forgotten. And so now because we've had the 64 uh, Voting Rights Act and I mean the 64 Civil Rights Act and the 65 Voting Rights Act, we think that progress 
uh, that, that, that progress has been made and that so now we don't need to engage in those politics anymore. But now is the definite time that we need to as we see the rise of the Tea Party, as we listen to Mitt Romney, as we see that, uh, that uh, 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 Ryan's budget is looking to cut social programs. We have to be in the streets advocating, championing, championing, ensuring that our interests are addressed instead of expecting that someone is going to do them for us. So what would you say to people who look at Obama and say, I voted for him because he's black, because that in itself is just such an iconic symbol of progress across the world that we elected the first African-American president. Well, and I will continue to vote for him just because he is black, even though he's not really making any overtures uh, to change policy. That I would say you, you get what you vote for. And it, you voted for symbolism, and you got symbolism. Uh, if now, but politics, again, has to be more than symbolic. It has to be based on policy. So there are those of us, on the one hand, and the, again, the, the symbolism is incredibly powerful and incredibly valid, but politics is about policy. And so if we, as a community, are interested in policy outcome, then then we have to be putting pressure on the system to ensure that we get it. And there are too many people with these champagne bottles left over from 2008 that are walking around still celebrating the fact that we have a president who is black. Those champagne bottles are empty. And now we have to reinvigorate ourselves. We have to get back out into the street. We have to get back into the process and engage the process to be sure that we get disproportionate incarceration addressed and the other issues that are, that are so important to our community. Now, this is a complicated issue, you know. I would begin by saying I think it's that very attitude that this gentleman uh, is, is showing that oh, this dude isn't black enough. I think that's that very same attitude that perpetuates a lot of the, 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 the negative tendencies in, in black youth, you know, culture. Or just black culture in general. Oh, oh, you know, you're not black enough. Who the hell are you to decide what kind of person that Obama should be just based on their, their skin color? I mean, seriously, Obama wasn't raised in the same exact environment as you. He's only half black, by the way. And you're going to tell him, oh, he's not black enough. You racist scumbag. How in the hell would people feel if, you know, when Bush was president, <clears throat> or say Mitt Romney gets pres becomes president, and, s and some white people come and say, oh, Mitt Romney isn't white enough. Mitt Romney doesn't care enough about white people. How in the hell would that look? You're saying that black people are so much more disadvantaged than white people in, in modern society? I'm sorry, maybe it's because I live in a humble place, which is not really rich right now. I've lived in, in wealthier places. And it's not just white people that are that are living in those kind of places. Where I, where I lived, you know, the, the suburbs were... A mixture of whites, Asians, Hispanics, blacks. We don't live in this one-dimensional, you know, two-dimensional world anymore. You go to the ghetto and you'll see all kinds of, you'll see blacks and, and, and Asians and, and uh, Latinos and whites. It, it's not just a homogenic uh, thing exactly anymore. And even if it were, okay, so now... Obama should should stop everything he's doing just so that he can do what give a bunch of money to underprivileged people in the ghetto Give a bunch of money to, to, to black People what is it that you want? The lady said that you know Obama isn't from those kind of Environments he wasn't raised in an urban environment and the guy goes on to say oh well, you know not all blacks are, are, are from urban environments Well, then what's your issue if, if all blacks are just in the same environments as whites then what's your point? Your point is that Obama should take some kind of special approach to, to black people in, 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 in particular and place that above, on his, uh, above his agenda than simply being the president of the United States. And, and exactly what would he do? 
more education, more jobs, more money for these for these kids in the ghetto who are, you know, just complete scoundrels, frankly. These kids who were raised by a previous generation of 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 uh, of you know ragamuffins who who are just you know patrolling the street and living on the street and and and, and knowing nothing but the street these people are just going to all of a sudden get it all together because Obama comes down from this from the clouds and and lifts them up and elevates them and liberates his people like Moses parting the red sea and taking the blacks from pharaoh you know the poor the the not the poor but the the rich white oppressors obama's going to come and lead the blacks out of egypt if anybody had that role at all in his story it would be someone like martin luther king you know what i mean even even someone like malcolm x but obama his his role isn't a black leader his role is the leader so, I mean, all this stuff is just nonsense. It just goes to show the kind of, you know, political correct, what, what, where political correctness and, you know, quote unquote, white guilt and, and favoritism splitting up the society into groups and favoriting certain groups over others, where it all leads. We don't live in the 30s anymore, my friend. You know, like I said, I live in a humble area where whites and blacks, Mexicans, are all equally impoverished. Pretty much. So, I don't understand this whole thing that we need to, or that Obama needs to be more black and come down and, and help black people. Really? If anything... The, like I said, the people who helped black people were the people like Martin Luther King, even Malcolm X. You know, giving black people hope, giving black people inspiration to, 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 to follow a more righteous path. You know, that's, that's really being that Moses and leading the black people out of, out of uh, slavery. You know, they were enslaved, actually, so it's another example. But, um, you can't just liberate people with, with, with government programs and with money. And what? You, you take all the black people and, and raise them up into middle class status? On the back of who? Who's going to pay for that? And why should another group pay for that? And what is paying for that even going to do? Like I said, if you have these people who are in these really strong inner city areas, who are the ones who are really the most downtrodden, their minds are so warped from living in these areas. You're just going to give them a bunch of money and everything's going to get better? You see, people like this, they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. And of course, Russia today gives them all the, the, the venue that they can because as the KGB guy explained, Russia's business was to create dissension in America. In, in order to cre to turn this group against the other group, that group against this group, they call it demoralization. And sooner or later, no one's able to see what's going on. Nobody cares about the country. I'm not saying that this is, you know, that all of the demoralization in the country is brought on by the KGB. Is RT... Hell yeah, you better believe that RT is a creation of the KGB, the intelligence agencies. It's funded by the Kremlin. So, <laughs> so there's that. I really, I don't know why people give an ear to RT so much. They're, they're just so eager to hear somebody who bashes America, I guess. And that's, that's really freaking petty. And it doesn't really tell us anything about the truth or the untruth. It just tells us that some people are very immature and ignorant and, and not willing to actually think, but rather would just kind of feel things emotionally 